Hey guys, Kessel the Guy here, back with something new this time. It is City Skylines, but it's not just gameplay. It's actually going to be a review, and it's going to be hopefully the first of many reviews that I plan to do. So, the first couple times I do reviews, um, they're probably going to be of older games, or that is to say, games that have been out for a few months. It's just going to mostly be games that I play right now. And as I get better at this and the more I do this, um, I will be able to catch games as they come out, and I'll have game or game reviews ready on the first couple of days they're out rather than a month later, like in this case. Um, but really, this is more uh, just a practice run just to see if I can do it and if I can do it well. So I'd really appreciate some feedback on this, and yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, so let me just go ahead and get started with this little review of mine. Fans of city simulation games have borne an itch that has not been scratched. I felt that itch as well, waiting for a quality successor to one of my favorite simulation games, and possibly one of my favorite games I had growing up. That game is SimCity 4. Since SimCity 4 came out in 2003, there has been no game that I felt was worthy of being called its successor. Games like Cities XL and even Max's own SimCity, which came out in 2013, have failed to produce an experience like the ever-popular SimCity 4. Enter City Skylines, by the studio Colossal Order. City Skylines is a game that promises a modern take on the classic city simulator. The game introduces new gameplay elements to realize the thrill and hardships of creating and maintaining a real city, whilst expanding on some well-established tropes of the city-building experience. This is a promise I want so very much to be true, and I think the developers of this game have delivered on that promise. And with the help of the Steam Workshop, it has gone well beyond, in a good way, what I ever expected for this game. Now, with all that out of the way, the question remains, is it worth it? City Skylines, which has no relation to the Cities XL franchise, is from the makers of the Cities in Motion franchise, a series focused primarily on managing a city's traffic. And funnily enough, traffic is one of the few things I believe this game struggles with, but we'll discuss that more later. So first, let's just have a quick overview of the game. When you start up, you're presented with a basic main menu screen. Pretty self-explanatory. If you wish, you can venture into the options menu to tweak graphic settings, among other things, to your liking. Heading back to the main menu, you'll notice on the left side a news feed widget, which presents information I've never really paid much attention to, and on the right side a widget for Steam Workshop. Yeah, that's right, this game fully supports and encourages modding, unlike the bad memory that is SimCity. We'll talk about mods more later, however. The last two menu options of note are the Tools and Content Manager options. Content Manager allows you to manage game assets as well as mods, providing you with the ability to add or remove these items with a click, as well as disable and enable certain options. The Tools menu option lets you go to the Map Editor to create your own maps, or the Asset Editor to create and modify existing game objects. These two tools alone promise a great deal of replayability. The map editor allows you to import height maps and modify them to your liking, allowing you to recreate nearly any location on the planet using publicly available height maps. And the asset editor allows you to import your own 3D models, again, increasing the possibilities of this game exponentially. Now again, back to the main menu, there is a login prompt, but the game in no way requires you to sign up for a Paradox account. Again, another plus one in my opinion for City Skylines. Now let's start a new game. When you click New Game, you're presented with a simple screen asking you to choose what map you would like to start on. On the bottom, there's a graphic that shows the amount of natural resources, what kind of connections the city has to the outside world, and the, and the suitable area for building, which I assume is just the land not covered in mountains or water. You can also name your city from the screen, and select if you would like your citizens to drive on the left side of the road. Let's go ahead and start a new map. After a brief loading screen which provides you with a few random tips and tricks, you'll be presented with your map. And a message on the bottom left that serves as a basic and unintrusive tutorial. I generally don't care for pop-up text tutorials, but I think Colossal Order did a good job. The tutorial is simple to skip and disable, as well as read and understand, and it doesn't impact your game in a negative way. In order to build anything, you'll need a connection with the outside world. You do this by simply selecting the road, being presented with another easy to understand tutorial, and clicking and dragging the road to its desired length. Simple enough, right? It's been done this way in nearly every city sim I've ever played. It works, so it doesn't need fixing. I think this is the same approach Colossal Order took while developing this game. They took everything that works in a city builder and put it in the game. For the most part, they succeeded. 
and where they might have failed both in opinion and reality, users are empowered by the Steam Workshop to create the game experience they want. This is all they had to do. This is all Maxis and EA had to do to create an experience that will last a long time. Simply take what people like from SimCity 4 and move it into the next generation of modern computing. That's it. Now, this isn't to say City Skyline doesn't have its faults, because it certainly does. There are some minor ones. Graphically, the game isn't stunning. There are no filters, and it's just kind of gray. Although the included color correction tool in the options menu may change the visual styling more to your liking, it's very limiting, only providing you with four options. Perhaps this can be rectified with mods. In fact, it may have already been, considering there are over 30,000 mods as of this review. Another gripe I had was the lack of variety in buildings. From a distance, this isn't so noticeable, but zoom into any one neighborhood and you'll be presented with a plethora of identical looking homes, both in appearance and color palette. Additionally, the lack of any disaster mechanics such as what you'd find in the SimCity series is disappointing. It could have been a great way to make cities more memorable, which brings me to another point. Oftentimes, I'd find myself playing this game for several hours in one sitting, building up a city from nothing to a thriving megalopolis, only to abandon the city the next day I play simply because my cities don't feel special to me. Perhaps it's just a failing of my personal style of play, or perhaps it's a strike against city skylines. One of the primary issues you encounter is traffic. Traffic management quickly becomes your primary concern once your city begins to grow. It's unclear to me if this was by design or simply an undesired consequence of how the game handles agents. What I mean by agents is that every single spec, also known as your citizens, has a purpose or function. They aren't simply randomly moving around the city with no purpose. Every delivery truck has a destination and source, just as every citizen has a job and a home. What this means is that without careful traffic management and planning, you can experience bottlenecks due to either your own incompetence or perhaps just how the game handles traffic, which seems to direct traffic based on the shortest distance available. It doesn't take into account congestion. There are some other smaller gripes I have, but traffic is by far the biggest antagonist I've seen. Which brings me to another point. Beyond traffic, there's really not any end goal or ongoing metric that you have to manage, which can turn some people off if they're looking for the game to tell them what to do, which it really doesn't. There are some achievements or milestones based on your population which unlock new services, but these stop after 80,000 population, meaning if you're just playing to unlock everything, congratulations, you've just done it. In addition to milestones as an ongoing goal, you can also unlock unique buildings which are earned by meeting certain requirements. For example, once your city has the airport, you can unlock the Grand Mall which improves metrics like tourism, attractiveness, and entertainment. But again, this is really all there is if you're looking for a sense of progression. You have to create your own milestones if you really want to enjoy this game to its fullest extent. But even then, you're not experiencing all this game has to offer. The best way to play this game is with mods. There are a myriad of mods which promise to fix nearly every problem I've encountered. A mod fix the obnoxious color of pollution in the water and ground. A mod let me correct the direction of my roads without the need to delete and replace them. They've added in-game terraforming. They allow me to place roads on top of roads. In short, the possibilities of this game, as well as its long-term viability, are essentially endless thanks to the modding support provided by the devs and the catalyst that is the Steam Workshop, making the installation of these mod files painless. This is the game that may very well dethrone what is often considered the definitive city builder, SimCity 4. Now, there's simply the matter of answering the original question I posed at the beginning of this video. Is it worth it? Despite its minor failings with traffic management and building variety, I think I can confidently say that this game is indeed worth the bargain price of $29.99. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is something new I'm trying, like I said, so there may not ever be another review video like this, but if you guys enjoyed this, absolutely just like it. You know, comment on it, let me know that I'm doing it well or that there's some things you'd like to see different. Um, really, I, this channel thrives on feedback. I can only grow if I hear from you guys, and I am more than happy to hear from you guys. So I really hope that this goes over well in that it becomes a thing I can continue to do in the future. And like I said, in the future, I'll be able to do better or I'll be more up to date with the games. I'll hopefully get them the review done by the time it's out or something. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Like I said, let me know in the comments if you liked it. Be sure to like it if you did enjoy this video. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and you want to see more of my amazing videos that are okay and become a part of the greatest community on YouTube. Anyway, I'm Jess with the Guy and I will see you guys next time.
Goodbye.